guys. Welcome back to another Weird Wednesday. I'm Ashers, and this is... Hello! Hello! How's your weekend? Uh, my weekend was uh, highs and lows. I got uh, stuck with a sick kid. Ooh. And as any parent knows, having a sick kid is a real fucking bummer. Um, that sucks. Yeah, it kind of... Uh, you know, it's 4th of July a weekend. He had his birthday on Thursday. We went to Dave and Buster's. Do they have Dave and Buster's out by you? I know. I think it's a chain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah. We, we did that and had a lot of fun. I did a bunch of DDR with my daughter. And uh, all of his classmates came. And then um, just kind of crashed after that. And uh, had my antibiotics. He was throwing up every morning. And it's like, it wasn't like... It's not like it was life threatening. It was just annoying. Like we can't bring you anywhere because you're gonna throw up all over people's tables and shit, you know? Yeah. So we just kind of hung out all weekend. Um, it was the fourth. I think this is the year I'm officially over the fireworks. Do not give a fuck anymore. Um, I used to be one of those people that would like spend an obscene amount of money on fireworks and get really into it. And now it's just like you know, I don't want to spend the money. It's like lighting up hundred dollar bills. All you do is you make a mess and you potentially injure somebody and they're fucking loud and I care about my dogs too much now. So sure. okay. I was kind of, I was kind of a party pooper in that respect too. But um, yeah, kind of a bummer weekend. Not, not too much exciting to report. No MST three K. I didn't watch Joe Bob night. Wanted to go see Elvis. Never made it to the movies. Wow. Uh, yeah. Just fucking swing and a miss all weekend long. Not good. <laughs> what about you? Tell me something good. Um, I guess I don't have any. Well, I got some things. I got, I got some stuff, I guess. Um, I watched the uh, American Werewolves by uh, Small Town Monsters. Okay. Um, which just came out, uh, well, today. It's already out by the time you guys are listening to this, but uh, July 5th. And um, I've been excited for this. I mean, this was, you know, I don't mind backing their projects anyway, but this was like the driving force. This was the reason why I became a Kickstarter backer. Um, uh th- this one and the uh jersey devil one which hasn't come out yet mm-hmm. um so this was uh definitely looking forward you know definitely looking forward to it watched it it was not what i expected it to be um it th- doesn't mean it's bad it's just that i guess i expected something a little more traditionally small town monsters and all it was was people giving their accounts of dogman oh jesus and um <laughs> I know you hate that thing, but you know, that's what it was. Um, but one of the accounts that that was given on there um, ended up being uh, one of my stomping grounds, actually. <laughs> and I was very Hot curious. topic. <laughs> no. <laughs> did they did they investigate a hot topic in a Dayton mall? <laughs> I'm gonna beat you up, Pato. <laughs> Was it, was it a bowling alley parking lot? Do I hang out at bowling alley park? Like I don't know. I'm just, <laughs> man, <I'm sorry. laughs> Is that a thing? People do that? Oh, yeah. Um, I guess you would know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> no, uh, it, no, it was uh, Germantown. So I've told the story before on the show. Probably multiple times I've told this story on the show. Um, it's about uh, Dead Man's Road and how he saw that dead body one time at this place that we used to go drive around at. And it's really fucking before. The road's weird. It's a weird mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. Always has been. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we used to go fucking nightly to that area. Nightly. And that was the very first time I had ever heard about Dog Man. And I thought it was the dumbest shit I'd ever heard in my entire fucking life. You know, I, I really did. Um, because I was there every single, at that time when I'd heard about it, I was there every night, had never seen anything, heard anything, smelled anything, anything remotely like that. It was a weird place with a lot of weird shit happening to us all the time, but nothing like that. And um, so one of the accounts, the guy goes on to talk about how he found some bloody shredded clothes in that area. And he's like describing it. And I know exactly what he's talking about. I know exactly the area he's talking about. And when I was thinking about it, he's talking about these bloody shredded clothes. The area that he's describing is where we fucking saw that dead body. Mm. And I was like, maybe I should reach out to that guy and uh, compare notes, you know? So I did. I did. And I I talked to the guy for like two hours. And, um, you know, it actually, like his story ended up happening in like 2006. Mine was more 2008, 2009. Wasn't the same thing. But the guy gave me a lot of really, really neat information. And it's kind of like lit a fire under my ass to get out there and, and investigate. So um, 
yeah, I'm I'm planning some stuff. Um, nice. And I'm excited about that. It's been a while since I've like physically gone out to investigate. Um, I haven't done it yet since I died almost, you know, and uh, I didn't think my body was quite ready for it. Um, but I think I'm getting there. I think I can. I think I could do it. So um, that was exciting. You know, that was good stuff. But anyway, watch uh, American Werewolves by Small Town Monsters. Uh, of course, they've got uh, Monster Fest 2023 coming up in June of next year. And uh, we're going to be there. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> there's that. Um, but you know, that was really, I really didn't do anything else. My fucking, my, on my birthday, um, my, uh, shower and toilet completely backed up. So I had to have a plumber come out and then on, uh, Sunday, the same thing happened. So that was fucking awesome. Um, so I've just been like literally swimming in shit in my bathroom all week and it's been great. Um, you gotta love living in an apartment. I swear to God, my neighbors are flushing things down the toilet that, that, you know, they're not supposed to. Right. That's gotta suck because you probably share like cleanouts with other people and their stupidity affects you. Exactly. Yeah. And so I'm, I was very annoyed with it. I still don't really trust my shower <laughs> or my toilet. Um, but you know, when it was, you know, outside of office hours, of course I call my maintenance crew and you know, they don't get back to me for another hour. Meanwhile, I don't have a toilet. You know, so um, start jarring your urine and selling it on Teespring. I pissed in a cup and and <laughs> threw it down the sink. You're th- throw it away, money. God damn it! Yeah, Just... that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Very. I true. could think of three individuals that are listening right now, and yes, motherfuckers, I'm talking about you. That would pay for that, and you just threw it down the sink. Fifty God people damn. just gasped, like, "Oh, he's talking about me." <laughs> <laughs> probably three with three was a conservative estimate three was a conservative estimate i'm sure there's several several more they're like oh he knows oh, um, no. but you know yeah I, I did the uh i did the i did the fourth of july thing you know uh but i didn't stay out very late um i'm also not crazy about fireworks like i really like to watch the fireworks um put on by cities but i don't like to do it up close I don't like the way that the big booms and the lights make me feel. Makes me feel not good. I get very, like, nauseous. Yeah, I was into blowing, like, five years ago, I got really into it again because my kids were a little bit older and my son was living in Fort Wayne. So I was always driving to Indiana because they're illegal in Illinois. So you got to get them in Indiana. And Indiana people get them from Ohio because you guys got the good shit. So um, five years ago, I kind of got back into it and started buying it, had a real good time. But then I feel like it just got too popular and like, you know, I, it, you could, you could do too much. It could be overkill. And I think I just need like a couple years off from it. And now I have dogs and the dogs mean a lot to me and I see the way it fucks with the dogs. So I kind of have a somewhat of a conscious about that. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'm on hiatus. I'm not, I'm not saying I'll never blow shit up again. Cause I do love blowing shit up, but um, I, I need to, I need a couple years off and then I'll, I'll make, I'll get some mortars and, well, I'll have a good time, but not now. I just need a break. Yeah, um, I, I just I well, I don't like home fireworks either, unless I can be very fucking far away from them. It, it makes me a nervous wreck. When I was a kid, um, one of our like family friends, you know, another kid, um, she took a bottle rocket to the stomach, and that fucked with me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because it wasn't on purpose, obviously, you know. But shit happens, and I'm like, I don't want to be that fucking person, like. <laughs> Yeah. So, when I was when I was it. when I was young, I stepped on a sparkler, and last year my kids stepped on a sparkler, and I was like, "Well, it's generational." Like, it's just the curse. This shit, yeah, this shit happens. Like, now he's fucking. He stepped on a sparkler this year. No, it was last. Oh, year. last year, and then this year he was sick. It's like this is how you know your life is going downhill when you step on the sparkler. It's over. He lost yeah. his innocence. Um, <laughs> and his children too will know the same fate. Um, <laughs> I swear to God, if you end up telling me that one of your grandkids fucked their foot up on a sparkler, <laughs> anyway. I hope to God I never say that word. Fucking grandkids, uh, gra- right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I we get it. We even joke about that shit, Ashers. Oh gosh, yeah, I don't. But I mean, I did the thing, you know. I drank with people, whatever. Yeah. That fucking Steve guy was there that I bitched about the last time. <laughs> the God, I hate that fucking guy. I just hate him so much. He's did just- he mention the show at all? No, he didn't. So I guess maybe he didn't listen to it. I don't know. But, you know, I was just like, God damn it. Why? Why'd they fucking. Well, he's banging one of the girls in the group or whatever. And 
I don't even know how that she tolerates them, but okay. Anyway. Um, so yeah, I just, you know, didn't do too, too much this weekend. Um, you know, I did, I forgot to mention last week that there was new merch out. And oh, yeah. um, we got one person take us up on our foot model offer. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. And there's more to go. So if you guys, I didn't want to, what was interesting is that I posted it on Instagram and I said, Hey, if you're, if you're interested, we got these slides, right? That's what they're called. And if you want to be a foot model, just slide into my DMS and we'll set it up. And a bunch of people who I think would have probably done it liked that post, but they never slid into my DMS and I'm not propositioning people to do this shit. You have to come to me and say, yo, I'll do that. And I only had one person actually take the initiative to message me and say, yo, I'll do that. So we only have one taker so far, but I'm hoping we can get a decent amount and then put out a calendar or something. I don't know. That would be cool. Yeah. So if you're interested, that. don't be shy. We're not going to exploit you. You're going to take your own pictures probably. I'm not going to fly you to Chicago. I'm going to send you a pair of fucking flip flops and you're going to take the picture and send it back. Like, Yeah, you can remain anonymous if, if you just tell us, hey, don't be, don't tag me. Sure. <laughs> like if that's what you, like, you, we, you know, we could do that. We have that much. Again, we will do absolutely anything to retain every single listener right. that we have. So the, we're not going to piss you off. <laughs> the only aesthetic, the, the only aesthetic guidelines I have are no toe rings because those are fucking gross. So you can do whatever you, you're going to do whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what what color your pedicure has to be but no toe rings. can they have ankle bracelets oh my god if they're like friendship bracelets handmade like woven stuff yes yes now there's all this criteria involved and well i mean requirements I, hey I'm, I'm making these choices for your own benefit because you clearly do. <laughs> so, so that you look presentable don't kill the messenger <laughs> well if you're not interested in the Paris Lights, we have our new Ask Me About My Podcast t-shirts. Do you have a podcast? Do you want people to come and approach you about your podcast? Well, <laughs> then, do I have a shirt for you, buddy? You should uh, click the link down in the description, go and buy yourself one. That's a pretty good pitch. I'm doing a good job. Wow, yeah, I ruined definitely. it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's a really fun idea, especially because, you know, as, as much as podcasters love to talk, some of you motherfuckers are so introverted. You guys don't know how to get yourself out there so you don't have to get yourself out there let me get you out there by you giving me your money and purchasing and ask me about my podcast t-shirt right especially so. good if you're one of those podcasters that hits the convention circuit absolutely it's a great thing to wear behind your booth and uh initiate a conversation with strangers just anywhere it's good to, it's well and it's a good thing to wear if you um are just going out to family functions you know like you want to talk about your podcast but you don't want to bring it up and be the weirdo at the party like Make people come to you. Make them ask. It's a, sure. it's, it's a it's a good thing to have. I bought one. So or if, if it's uh, axe throwing night at the craft beer brewery by your house. Oh yeah, you'll get so many fucking people <laughs> that will ask you about your podcast there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're just bringing in the listeners. Make them come to you. Make them work for it. Um, you know, you like I said, send, send me your money. We'll send you a shirt. Um, so that is uh, there's that also. Um, new Patreon episode this this week. Um, we did uh, what did we do Arizona. We sure did a new episode of Weird World, all about Arizona, um, and it was actually really good. I'm not that the other ones are bad, you know, they're not bad, but um, Arizona had a lot to it, you know. So there was that. There's definitely a lot of content there to uh, to break apart. So um, go check that out, and um, you know subscribe to the patreon what are you doing with your life not subscribing to the patreon there's a whole discord now that you guys are missing out on um where i post things that i don't fucking post anywhere literally anywhere um in that discord server and then of course all the content and uh hey that asked me about my podcast t-shirt 30 percent off if you're a patron so go join the patreon right. i'm just shilling it away i'm just Sam just throwing it out there. I was in the picture of health when we recorded that one. So if you felt, if you feel this week's episode is lackluster, go uh, listen to this week's Patreon <laughs> Weird World episode because we we're definitely fiery on all cylinders. We we're at the top of our game for that one. <laughs> it was really good. It was a really good yeah. episode. Um, you know, and then of course the other episodes of Weird World are there. Now that makes three of them, um, and then of course little slices of life uh, conversations that we have. You did right another mock match after. Which I can't I wait to listen to. Yeah, you I can't wait right. to listen to that. Yes, yeah. I've, I've, so I promised audiobooks and then I fucking flaked on it. But 
cut me some slack, guys. It's been a hard couple of months. But I'm back reading the Mothman Prophecies. I now have chapters one and two out. I will release them as individual chapters. And then once it's all done, um, I will put them all together into one if you really want to sit and binge it. Uh, they're not very long. I mean, probably about 20 to 30 minutes per chapter. It's an easy listen, yeah. Um, but they're done MST3K style. I, I kind of make commentary in regards to what's being said. Um, you know, good, bad, funny, indifferent, whatever. Um, but it is good. Chapter two of the Mothman Prophecies is all about the Men in Black fan favorite, Men in Black. So, um, you know, definitely check that out as well. And of course, there will be more books beyond Mothman Prophecy. This is just a start. So, um, yeah, there's that. What was I getting ready to shill next? I know I was getting ready to shill something. I Paranormality it. Magazine's Podcast of the Year. Do we want to shill that? Uh, sure, why not? If you love our podcast and we are your favorite, which of course we are because you're here listening to us now, we know it, um, go tell Paranormality Magazine about it. Um, they are having the uh, podcast awards. And not just that, um, we've never made it into their top 10. Which is bizarre. It is really bizarre. It's really weird <laughs> because... I'm not going to say it, but, um, you know, what are you guys doing? Go submit the podcast over. Go tell right. Paranormality Magazine how much you love this show. We know you love the show. You got to tell people that you love the show. It doesn't do us any good if you're sitting in your fucking basement in silence not telling anybody. You got to go tell people about how much you love on Wednesdays We Talk Weird. I've been um, posting the link for it, so I'm sure it'll pop. It'll come across your feeds at some point and just yeah, take the 30 seconds it takes to, uh, to fill out the... Uh, the little web form and i'm not trying to bribe anyone nor am i going to suggest that people make fake email accounts and 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 vote multiple times although i am from chicago and that's kind of how we do elections around here but um yeah just just vote for us legally and fairly sure and uh it would mean a lot to us and uh you know what can i say i'm a shallow human being i like to win shit you know what I mean? Like, no apologies. Well, exactly. I'm, a, I'm a 41 year old man. I like to win shit. You know what I mean? So help me win some shit. Help us, uh, help us at least like crack the top 10 or whatever the fuck, how this works. But, yeah. uh, if you take 30 seconds, vote for us next time you take a dump and, uh, we'll be forever indebted to you guys. I'll post the link in the description there also. And yeah, like Pato said, well, you'll probably see it pop up on social media. So when you see it, you know, if you see something, say something. Get on there and tell, and tell Paranormality <laughs> that you love our show. <laughs> um, you know, that, that that was a good show. That was smart right there. I'm trying to do more of that. You know, I know people hate that stuff. But, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that we can't keep doing this for free. So, um, you know, if you can't stand to sit here and listen to it, I'm, I'm, I'm shilling at you for complete, at completely no cost to you. So you get that advantage. But um you know just period support the show support your local content creators not just us if you have other podcasts that you like vote for them too um for the podcast awards because it's not fun when you just completely blow everybody out of the water and win i mean you know we gotta have some type of competition so i mean vote for all your favorite podcasts because you know they all deserve it i promise sure um but just make sure you vote for us first so <laughs> yeah, trust me no no one is doing no one is creating this kind of content as part of a get rich quick scheme no. Everybody that approaches this type of content in this field does it from a place of obsession or weirdness or or whatever. And uh, I, I think, you know, we all have the best of intentions and uh, we all deserve to be recognized and honored and, and given our, uh, you know, 15 seconds in the spotlight. So. Sure. Yeah. I mean, we can't all be Joe Rogan. I mean, you know, and he's not even as good as we are. So I don't know. Right. Um, <laughs> also uh right now at, right now this is happening uh, on my twitter um tobias whalen and adam from pine barons in institute are arguing about who would win in a fight uh count chocula or captain crunch count chocula right exactly easy easy right. but tobias is uh just not having it no he is not having it um he is all team captain crunch um you guys want to hear this debate you guys want me to sit down and record with them a, a, a live <laughs> debate? because i'm thinking about doing it for the patreon i think that would be awesome i, I don't even do it that. for the patreon just do it just to do it no that's fuck that that's a paywall content you don't get that. You don't have to pay for it. but uh that's another reason why you sub should subscribe over there because then you get fun stuff like that i mean you get all of the neat all of the information and and research and all that but then you get the really fun stuff that really doesn't fucking fit anywhere else um sure. and uh that's going to be one of them so another patreon plug um anyway 
Today is July 11th. Pato, do you know what July 11th or July 11th? <laughs> it's July 5th. I don't know what the 11th is, but it's not today. <laughs> Apparently, I time traveled. Do you know what's significant about July 5th? Uh, no. You should. But I don't. Uh, it's X oh, Day. Th- oh, that's right. I, you know, I thought I, I saw you and Red posting about that, and I thought, oh, this applies to me now because I joined that cult this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's X Day. Um, there were no flying saucers today, um, so uh, the world did not end um, like it should have. July fifth, nineteen ninety eight. So we will uh, wait another year. But happy X Day to my fellow uh, Church of the Subgenius members that obviously listen to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, CERN apparently changed the world today, or something. I mean, ripped open a parallel universe and. Um, that's where we are now so um oh they really didn't going forward the show is called um on saturdays we talk smut um <laughs> you know <laughs> that was a really bad joke I'm, thank you for laughing at it <laughs> do you have the details on the cern thing or do you want me to give like the the reader's digest version um go ahead i've been screaming about the cern thing forever so so, I'll, so cern uh performed a function that it hadn't previously performed um by firing uh particles at each other however it's something that happens all the time in nature uh organically all the time yeah yeah so it wasn't it it was unique that we initiated it but it was not unique in in it happening so people kind of thought that all this crazy shit might happen but anyone that had spent more than 15 seconds reading a Twitter article would realize, no, this happens all the time organically in, in physics and it will be fine. And we were fine. Yeah. So, we're yeah. just fine. Well, and you know, the whole point of the large Hadron Collider is that, you know, we are trying to figure out how the world was created. And I think that's where people get very confused. And um, one way that I kind of explained it to somebody was that, um, you know it the world was created in very much the same way that you make a sandwich you know you got the bread and the meat and the cheese and the toppings and the condiments right and so when they're colliding these particles together when they're smashing them together they're making the bread they're making the meat they're making the cheese but it's not capable of putting those things together to create and 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 that's really the biggest risk of it all in the end, eventually, not probably in our lifetime, but eventually, they will make a machine that they uh, recreate a small world in that will happen. Um, but that is, that's the risk. It's not tearing open fucking portals and, you know, God, if it was that easy, we would have done it by now. You know, um, it's not. It doesn't work that way. But the bigger risk would be creating another Big Bang and um, creating a whole other world rather than uh, a window to a to a different one or what have you um so yeah that's just been very annoying like you said i mean exactly if you would have just googled it for just a couple of minutes you'd see that there was nothing to worry about nothing happened so it's so interesting that we're this culture that's addicted to technology that and yet we don't know how it works and we inherently fear it as well like think about what kind of like latent uh anxiety that gives some people that like are so dependent on all this all this stuff and yet the p- kind of people that freak out when they read those cern articles or, or or pass it around or oh my god did you see this you know i knew it i knew it like they're fucking with something they shouldn't fuck with and yet you know if they took the time to learn it they could probably wrap their head around what was actually happening number one and number two these are the same goofballs that don't really understand how their cell phone works either yeah and they, and they take that for granted it's like we have this fear slash dependency on technology and i think it it leaves some people in a very uneasy state and that could potentially be why so many people are off their fucking rocker these days it's one of the contributing factors you know is that we're just so out of sorts we don't the world doesn't make sense to us anymore it's because we don't bother to read past the headlines you know well and that's that's an accountability issue a thousand percent you know i've said that before um when uh you know all this and social media with all this uh roe versus wade thing going around i'd shared a post that had mentioned something about vasectomies were reversible and that wasn't even the point of the post um but somebody got on there and like well they're not reversible and it's like you know what listen if you're gonna fucking go out and get a vasectomy it is your goddamn responsibility to learn everything about it. Yours, not not Facebook's, not anybody else's. It is your responsibility to go learn everything about it. It is 
your responsibility to read beyond the headline. It's not the news's responsibility. It's yeah. yours. And for the record, vasectomies are reversible. However, if you had a vasectomy and decided to have more children at that point, it would be more realistic that you would go IVF than reverse your vasectomy because it's it's painful and it's very invasive. Not that I'm saying don't get a vasectomy. I had one a decade ago. It was the best decision I ever made. But yeah, uh, yeah I mean, no, they are reversible. But at the same time, that's, that's all it takes. It's something like that where it's like there's not there's not like a clear cut answer. It's like, yes, they are reversible. But realistically, you wouldn't get it reversed. You would probably go with in vitro at that point um, for simplicity reasons. And that's all. But people don't even get that far. You know, that's the thing is that the Internet can literally teach you anything. Anything you want. If you take the time to read it. <laughs> exactly, because you are accountable for yourself and your own and action. Granted, there's, there's disinformation out there. All right. But the correct information is there, too. So sometimes you might have to read multiple sources and then kind of use your common sense and, and, and kind of draw conclusions. But the whole entire breath of mankind's compiled knowledge since the dawn of time, everything that's ever survived and been passed along is available on fucking Google. Yeah. If, if you live in the United States and like the fact that some people are ill-informed about shit just shows laziness and ignorance. Yeah. It's nobody's fault, but their own. I don't even feel like you can blame the media at this point. No. Granted, no. the media is not being your friend. Like they're, 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 you know, they have their own agenda. And I think we realize that now, but you know, the info's out there. So if you, if you run your mouth about some shit that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, be it CERN, or vasectomies it's your own fault exactly you know? exactly well and the media has always been that way let's let's not lie to ourselves the media has always had an agenda ever since media was a thing it's had an agenda that's just journalism um dishonest journalism but it's journalism and that's the way it is they're going to use catchy headlines that get you to read what they actually wrote and it's your responsibility to then go ahead and read it um you know so that is uh i'm gonna go off my soapbox now but yes sure um you guys need to learn about these things, you know, um, that's, that's what you should do. <laughs> so speaking of the media, um, here, you want some news? Yeah. <laughs> um, I got a couple of things here. Um, Pato, I don't, I don't know if you're, yeah, if you're on the discord, but if you were, um, people in the discord get the news as I get it, um, throughout the week, uh, before the show and you guys can discuss it with me. Um, but all of these articles are posted there. Um, there was a, a UFO spotted in Iowa that some guy recorded. And I don't normally care about these things, right? I mean, you see one UFO on a video, you see a thousand, you know. Um, there's some that are better than others. This one's fucking weird, though. It's like a dust orb. You know what a dust orb looks like, right? Mm -hmm. It's like that, but it's it's not. It's not just like it's moving very purposefully in the sky. Did you see this? Did you watch it on the? You didn't get on the Discord, did you? No, I didn't. <sighs> Well, I don't have the I don't have the article available, but you have to use the theater of the mind to describe it to me. Uh, it looks like a dust orb, but in the sky, and <laughs> okay. very purposefully. Massively um, done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it it just looks very odd. I don't know what to make of it. Obviously, it's an uh, unidentified flying ob object. So, you know, I don't know if this thing was like trying to cloak and failing. I've never seen anything quite like it. And all the UFO videos I've watched my whole life, I've never seen anything quite like it. It's very disc shaped um which i love that i love flying saucers um but uh you know interesting i'll, I'll uh, post that video in the description um also there was a mysterious creature that washed ashore an egyptian beach and this thing looks fucking weird i mean it really looks weird now more than most likely it's a moray eel okay but it just looks strange. Pato, I do have to send you this one because you're going to have to see it. Wow. That looks Atlantean. It looks fucking weird. And uh, anyway, so, um, I, you know, again, not usually one that is too excited about things that wash up on the beach, but it depends on what it is. And I think this is one of those things, man, nobody's talking about this thing. So to me, I, I agree. Either it is a moray eel that's just been dried the fuck up and, and badly decomposed, or it's a taxidermy that somebody has put together and planted. Like the jackalope? It could be, yes. 
I don't think it's a taxidermy because it would have to survive salt water and all that shit. You know what I mean? Being a sea, being something that was found on the beach. It was farther out. Like it was, and that was another weird part about it. It was found in a place where the waves don't carry. Mm -hmm. So that is a very good argument for something found on the beach um, that could have been placed by somebody. And who knows? Maybe even the lady reporting that she saw it um placed it there you know my people don't call anybody when these things pop up she didn't call anyone she just took a picture and moved on like that was fucking weird um it wasn't huge it was big but it wasn't very it wasn't huge um but gosh it just looks so odd that's a very weird but you know decomposition can do that to things um and make them look that way and worry eels already are really kind of terrifying looking so I, i could certainly see that so Again, uh, I'll link the story in the description or, you know, Patreon, Discord, I, you know, I'm just saying. Um, and then my last bit of news is also very topical um, because it has to do with uh, the mysterious uh, creature. Um, <laughs> so in, I think it's, um, I think it's Altswater. Altswater is in, I think it's in England um there is a guy that's been hanging out there that's been like preaching at people saying that he has seen multiple geese swimming on the surface of the water that have been taken down taken down by some large creature he doesn't know what it is um actually i'm pretty sure altswater is a lake um as a matter of fact and uh he says that some some creature is snatching up geese off the surface of the water and there's nothing that lives in those waters that should be large enough or you know predatory enough to take something like that out and he's reported this he's very concerned he's reported it to um you know wildlife people <laughs> people that own the lake and uh nobody really seems to give a shit so i don't know i would like to believe that it is um like a giant turtle like the beast of busco yeah that's what i want to believe it's a giant snapping turtle and um it's it's eating geese right off the surface so We'll watch that and see what happens there if anything develops um but you know i thought that was an interesting story um you know it could be something normal again it could could be a, a large creature i don't know we'll see we'll see what happens but anyway pato kaborosaurus what do you know about kaborosaurus oh i had a news article i had a news story i wanted to get to real quick oh sure i'm yeah, sorry th- just this assumed. is actually no i know i'm usually usually pretty uh pretty scarce in this segment of the show uh unless it's something you know mind-blowing and prophetic like the sinkhole forests in china but this one comes to us direct from sigler 14 uh stole this one from tobias whalen with my own two hands he reported something that david foley uh my second favorite kids in the hall um had put on twitter last week uh Dave Foley, so he was on, uh, you might, what was he on? He was on a couple different things, um, but mostly known for Kids in the Hall. And uh, he took to Twitter June 29th to talk about a UFO that he saw in L.A. And he actually uh, posted a drawing of it as well. And, um, you know, he said, this is 100% real. This isn't a bit. Uh, this is a personal experience that I had. And it's it's has moved beyond an issue of, belief the significant amounts of data acknowledged by the pentagon and congress makes existence of ufo uap phenomenon an established reality and i guess the event took place back in january close to los angeles and lasted several minutes he said the object was the size of a greyhound bus but with no visible means of propulsion that's what i saw so if you go on twitter and follow dave foley um he made the post on june 29th so you could see the picture of it and all that stuff and uh, I thought that was cool as fuck because Kids in the Hall is probably just, some, uh, oh God, it was um, one of the, a very influential part of my childhood and my adolescence. I would, you know, would spend weekends watching MST3K on Comedy Central and then Kids in the Hall on HBO every weekend. And uh, it's like, I, I, if you don't know what Kids in the Hall is, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. It's groundbreaking comedy. Go check it out. And they recently revived themselves on um, Amazon. And the, the revival isn't too bad either. And the first episode's really fucking funny. And if you dig that, then you'll probably dig the rest of it too. But I thought that was neat. You know, we've always talked about doing an episode of Celebrity UFO Sightings, you know. Right. Uh, Sammy Hager's got some good stories. I remember Shirley MacLaine 
growing up being the butt of a lot of jokes. I don't specifically know what her connection was, but I know that she supposedly had a lot of sightings or, or brushes with the paranormal. Um, who else? There's some, there's athletes too, which I usually ignore because I'm not a sports person, but, uh, that might be an interesting episode to do celebrity, uh, celebrity UFO sightings. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we've talked about them before. Um, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of people have come forward with them. Um, you know, it's not really, um, unheard of, you know, obviously Dan Aykroyd is, Oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, he's the go-to, but you okay. know, um, the blink 182 guy. Yeah. Tom DeLonge. Yes, thank you. I can never never remember his fucking name. Um, Sammy Katie Hagar, Perry. though, I've never Katy Perry. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Sammy Hagar wrote like he wrote an autobiography, and there's like a whole big fucking thing in there that like he just totally you know because every everyone would have read an autobiography of Sammy Hagar anyway. He was the second lead singer of Van Halen, and you know just threw it in there. And there's a chapter talking about him being abducted by aliens and. Uh, communicating with them and all this stuff and when it came out came out like in the mid 90s and everyone was like what the fuck (laughs) like it totally caught everybody off guard because he never seemed like that type of person and went ahead and just put it in print clear as day you know so i would love to i would love to dive into that because i've never actually read it and see what he had to say about his experience but it's something that when he does interviews every once in a while someone will bring it up and he doesn't flinch he's like yeah i met with these beings it was in the early 80s and you know there was a transfer of information and yada 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 and whatever man so wow yeah i uh well, lloyd kaufman told me that he thought his hotel room was haunted once but he thinks he was just drunk so <laughs> <laughs> oh uncle lloyd yeah i guess we should talk about that real quick i did not make it into trauma dance this year oh. which was heartbreaking uh but i did make it into the 14 film festival yep in the uk right. so that'll be i'm very excited about that and it also really jazzed me for um, this year's 48-hour film project, which uh, should be in October, and they should be announcing the details sometime this week. So uh, when that happens, if you want to collaborate and you want to get involved and make some weird shit, I'm sure I'll shill it on the show. But um, yeah, I don't know. That was a little tangent, but whatever. <laughs> we'll get into the dinosaur now. Oh, my God. Pat keeps calling it a dinosaur. Um <laughs> so okay so i've said this a lot and uh people people uh, i don't know still just assume mothman is not my favorite cryptid as a matter of fact um who i'm about, about ready to stir the pot here people are gonna get mad at me it's fine mothman is not a cryptid at all you guys it's not a cryptid he's an alien thing he's like an alien that's more ufology it's not cryptozoology um cryptids are are animals that are just um unverifiable by science but plenty of anecdotal evidence or you know maybe even small pieces of evidence that that uh point towards their existence um and uh so a lot of these things that we call cryptids aren't cryptids um the mothman flatwoods monster um the squonk is clearly not i mean it's not real you know <laughs> like that's folklore <laughs> um you know different things uh are not classified as this um uh, caddy caborosaurus is very much a cryptid um and this is like this is really feel good um grade a cryptozoology i mean this is very um just right on the money this is cryptozoology um and that's very sexy to me so needless to say caddy happens to be one of my favorite cryptids uh, is it my favorite definitively uh, almost but i don't i can't say that for sure i got so many it's like picking your favorite kid you know you're not supposed to you got <laughs> one but you're not supposed to pick your favorite you know <laughs> you don't so. let yourself be recorded admitted to me I, yeah. <laughs> I only have one so I, I mean i don't have any choices so <laughs> but uh you know that's uh anyway unless it's not her <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> it's not no <laughs> um anyway uh but you know caddy caddy's one of my favorites um so caborosaurus is a um 20 to 40 foot even somewhere sometimes upwards of 80 feet uh which i think is too large um big sea serpent out um mostly off of uh cab road bay outside of british columbia um but seen all throughout um you know the pacific coast um all the way from california 
up through Alaska, um, you know, just been seen around there forever. But the very odd thing about this large serpentine creature is that it has a camel-like head. Um, mm-hmm. So a big old, a big old horse or camel head. Most of the times, it's it's described as um, a lot of people. Um, allegedly say that the inuit um people the Inu- the inuits is that race inuits fine right i don't think so but what the fuck would i know i'm the I last person to ask if somebody's I don't know. insensitive that's a that's a well that's a good point um <laughs> i think it's fine <laughs> don't offend me none good the white man thinks it's fine you, you don't so. hear the irish <laughs> getting upset when you call us mix what the fuck <laughs> Huh? well anyway characterize me as a drunk see if i give a shit i'll laugh about it what are these people getting all sensitive about <laughs> i mean you can't be mad but it's true i don't know <laughs> anyway the eskimos go on the eskimos yeah there you go <laughs> jesus um so the inuits um had you know allegedly uh caddy goes back to them even um they would paint uh pictures of this thing on their boats to kind of ward it away Th- that part i don't care about it's not really that interesting um you know native tribes all have sea serpents right um we right. actually um kind of just barely mentioned one in the arizona episode and it, it doesn't obviously need ocean it like lives on the land well the thunderbirds um, have like the water panthers and shit like they're all over the place right you know so i mean that part okay get you know take it or leave it uh, listen if you're looking for weirdness within native american lore in a certain area you're gonna find it right. um you know but i i've been on this like thing lately where i hate the fact that people like um you know really take these native stories and like blame certain events on them uh, for instance while i was watching american werewolves i will gripe about this elijah henderson um was on there and he was saying that the beast of lbl um the land between the lakes dog man um people think is some type of skinwalker no elijah people don't because skinwalkers aren't part of cherokee or shawnee um lore and that's the native americans that that was their land so shut the fuck up um you know know what you're talking about before you go they didn't have a skinwalker so that's not true um (laughs) yeah and and people do that in this field they do that a lot and it's really gross you know that they will take these stories and try to put it to this you know these creatures in this lore um so whether or not that's true of caddy i don't know what i will tell you though is that the inuits did travel in a pattern because they were trying to avoid something in the water at certain times Right. And there there is a belief that Caddy is most active during these times that it migrates. And so there could maybe be a connection there um, that there was something in the water that they were trying to avoid because it lived there. Now, who knows? Maybe it could have been other things. Maybe it could have been fucking sharks that they were trying to avoid. I don't know. Maybe right. it's because the water was cold. I don't know. Um, but that that is a potential um, tie in there to this thing dating back um pre-white man <laughs> so <laughs> um i just wanted to uh mention that part um but caddy itself has been around forever i mean it's been around for a long time and and not just that there are so many fucking reports of this thing and i'm not talking about just like i seen it you know someone's like oh i seen it that one time um you know all, most notably in the 1930s is when um the kabor source lore was really ramping up but if you notice at the same time um nessie was too Loch Ness monster um was really ramping up in the 1930s it was just the time for for it was like the year of the lake monster i don't know um you know and uh but the stories were really getting up there and you had people coming forward saying you know yeah we saw this thing i saw this thing everybody had seen this thing um but it really made a splash, I guess, kind of. <laughs> did you like that? Oh, God. It got me wet. Oh, yeah? Did it? <laughs> yeah. I want to get you a life jacket there so you don't drown in all this Oof. glory. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, in 1937, a bunch of whalers were out there, you know, whaling like they do. <laughs> and uh they caught they caught this wit this big old whale and we're emptying out the stomach contents i guess that's part of whaling i don't know i don't hunt um and they found a carcass inside which was about a 10 foot long weird serpentine thing but the head on it was very odd um it had a guess what kind of a camel shaped fucking head on it um so this was i mean this was a big deal people were excited about it and they all said oh it's caddy it's caddy um 
but it kind of this whole event kind of faded away into obscurity and nobody really thought about it ever again honestly um you know they just didn't really think about that actual carcass because at that time tons of people were coming forward saying that they were catching this thing left and right people were catching its babies people were catching it um and who knows fishermen tell tales right. you know they do um yeah, i caught a fish it was this big you know we've all heard that um but this was just so normal that nobody you know felt the need to capture this thing and send it off anywhere they they just knew that it existed and they'd catch it sometimes they get caught up in their nets while they're fishing mostly the babies it seemed that like that was a big um you know point is that they'd catch these babies now of course um people have said that well they weren't catching baby you know cabora sources they were catching this other fish or something else or um you know lots of uh people have said that these things could be identified as seals or just so many fucking other so many fucking other creatures um but a gentleman came along um by the name of edward i think it's bousefield boosefield i don't know old eddie um (laughs) eddie was a retired marine biologist and he believed in caddies so bad he thought this thing was 100 percent. this was legit this was real And he was making it his life's goal to set out and prove this thing. So he teamed up with another gentleman. We're just going to call him Paul. And, uh, you know, they went on a search trying to find evidence for this thing. Um, And, you know, they were both, you know, again, marine biologist um, Paul LeBlond, I think is his name. He uh, did, I don't know, he was like an environmentalist and shit. I mean, these were really accredited people. Like, they, they weren't just people with podcasts or whatever <laughs> like they're, you know, actual freaking people you know yeah. out there in science and uh they thought this thing was real um so they made it their life's mission and they fucking hit the holy grail of the 1990s um when they were digging through an old some old museum archives and they found these photographs and in the photographs well guess what it was it was some creature laying just uh, all spread out and it's 10 feet of glory a tail hanging off to the side and a big old camel head and so <laughs> they had done it this was that carcass that was found in the whale stomach in 1937 somebody had thought to take pictures of it and there was three of them um that they had discovered and again this wasn't this is just something that stayed from the from 1937 until i think it was 1993 that nobody ever knew existed right. nobody ever talked about it was just there um so the rumors started flying um what people were saying was that the the whalers the fishermen at the time they um they took pictures of this thing and they took the the some um some parts of the carcass not the whole thing and sent it off to this museum so the hunt was on now to find pieces of this carcass to figure out what exactly it was to this day it's never been found what we think might have happened because that that picture and and i'll probably post it with this episode so that's what you're looking at um that picture uh has been de- has de- been debunked by people because they said that it was studied by some institute and they had um come to terms with the fact that it was a just a whale fetus or maybe even a, a smaller bird. it was some type of whale de- uh, decomposed whale but that was never confirmed because in 1937 we didn't have dna testing so all they could do was take a look at this thing or even one piece of it and go ah fuck that's just whale you know with the naked eye and we know that that's not a really good way to identify things we know that um because in the beginning of this episode we talked about that ugly egyptian you know shore beast or whatever (laughs) you know so and um you know it's not a good way to try to identify things now you know which is just safe to say that any of us getting excited over this photograph thinking that it could be a kaborosaurus um you know it's uh probably silly because it, that could also i mean it really could be any number of things um but uh eddie eddie and Polly, um they they got together and what they were trying to do was they were actually trying to get this this creature out of cryptozoology and and into zoology they were trying to classify this animal and um you know they use this picture as a really big basis of it and not just that just these hundreds of accounts of sightings and people catching this thing and you know all these carcasses washing up and 
Um, you know, they were really trying to make the push to get it recognized. Now, they're, they did end up putting out a scientific journal on it. They've written two books about it, as a matter of fact, um, and put out a scientific journal on it, which was peer reviewed by multiple people and checked off on by these people. Um, but it never quite made the cut. And, uh, you know, now both of them have, have since passed. Um, and nobody's really uh, hunting the caddy anymore. So I'll take a breath. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing lots of talking. With all that in mind, Pat O, any, any opinions so far? I think uh, small town monsters should get involved. Oh, do you? Yeah. I think that they should hire me if they get involved. Let's see Heather Moser on a beach. <laughs> the magnifying glass looking for this fucking thing. <laughs> I love her so much. She's so great. I, I did not pick her name accidentally. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, I don't know. It seems to be some weight behind this one. Let's get out there. Like, you know, let's get some people on. Let's get the East Coast contingent working on this shit. Right. You know, we right. know a bunch of people hanging off the coast of Maine. Let's get this shit Kin- now. Connecticut or whatever the fuck those girls are from. Like, That'll go all the way over to the West Coast? What? I thought it was East Coast. No, this is the Pacific. The um, Pacific Coast. <laughs> yeah, I don't even, I'm so fucked up right now. I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah, Vancouver, you're absolutely right. Okay. I'm doing so good at this, and you're just bombing it, Pato. Fucking bombing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the color commentary this week. It's delirious. Uh, like delirious ramblings. Oh, uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad you're here. The alternative is not ideal for me. So, right, no, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got gotcha. you. But this, no, this, it, this will be your demo reel. Trust me. Episodes like this are good for your demo reel, <laughs> where you show that you can carry a show by yourself. You don't need a co-host. You know. Well, this. that's sweet. But anyway, <laughs> no, it is. Uh, um, it, it is one of my favorites because I do think that you know I agree. There's some weight to this. I think that. Uh, there could potentially be something out there. Um, you know, Ed, Eddie and Pauly, they ended up saying that this thing was uh, maybe what the plesiosaur had evolved into. And they based it primarily off of just these three photographs. I mean, um, you know, really, if you ever get the chance to, to deep dive into this, um, it is very interesting. Except, you know, they were basing these findings off of our old idea of dinosaurs we, we don't really um that's changed you know in the last couple of years um you know dinosaurs don't really look like that now and i don't necessarily agree that it would look like that now um darren nash i think his last name is nash i don't know how to say it but this guy darren nash <laughs> um he's very skeptical he he's also a scientist he's still alive he does these fucking amazing mega threads over on twitter i'm gonna put his account so you guys can follow him if you don't already um f- a fucking gold mine of information good information he's very skeptical of a lot of things and it's not so much i mean he's skeptical but clearly he wants to believe i mean he's thinking with his head um, while he really has torn apart these two guys' research, um, which is not terrible, I mean, he's right, he thinks that, um, you know, we should give a little bit more importance to to this creature out there. Um, you know, he thinks that it's ridiculous that we just kind of chalk up all these sightings to something else. I didn't even talk about, oh my gosh, that's right. In 2009, a video was taken of this creature by uh fisherman kelly nash and i'll post that and i got lots of links to post for you guys um, i'll post that too um it you know it, what is it i don't know it's better than just a wake in the water i can tell you that there's humps yeah. okay and then there's also like what appears to be a head come out in you know into the water and, and dive back down in um you know it's for what it is it's better than some of the shit we got right it's not great still (laughs) um but people have just chalked it up to being seals in the water um but that guy was out there he was out there looking at it watching it happen and i think that um you know a lot of times when we see some of this evidence at face value it's really easy to write it off and just go oh well that's just seals or whatever but when you take the story of it and put it together you know that man who spends all his time out there on the water would know if it was fucking seals right you know, he's not dumb. He's out there every day doing it. He's a fisherman. You know, he knows what a seal looks like. And and that's another thing where, you know, even though, yes, fishermen do tell stories. So when they're saying that they're seeing something that's 80 feet long in the water, that part's probably an, an embellishment. But did they see something in the water? Probably. 
yeah, probably something they couldn't identify. Sure. Um, there was a sighting in 1953 that happened with Caddy where 10 different people from 10 different angles saw it. And people that weren't related to each other, didn't know each other. They all 10 saw this thing and reported the exact same encounter that they had with it. And so, I mean, I just, I think that this one, I think this is a hit for me. I mean, I, I think it's real and maybe I'm biased and I want it to be real. I've been looking at that photograph since I was a kid and, you know, I, I want it to be the real thing, you know, so I, I try to give arguments towards it, but I, I don't know when I try to, when I, when I set my, my romanticism aside for it and I really, you know, look at what we know and I look at the data, I think there's something there. And uh, I think it's uh, a disservice for cryptozoology for nobody to be out there studying this anymore. So, something to think about. But There you go. Well, you can lead the charge the next generation. <laughs> I move out there. <laughs> That's so far. It's cold there. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to swim. That's a problem. But I don't need to swim if I'm on a boat, right? We'll get, you some, we'll get you some water wings. Yes, I get some water wings. I, I can get little caddies on them. Little little camel heads. Um, but very interesting. If it is real, it probably is some type of new species of um, mammal. I mean, really. You know, some people have described it with like having fur on it. Fur in the water. I don't believe those stories. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, but that could be algae or seaweed or something. That's that true. Up and it's got, you know, debris on it. Well, it's just fucking gross. <laughs> it's got some stank on it. There's shit hanging off it. It's got all kinds of just grossness. Litter. Who knows? You know, right. um, pollution. Um, that's true. That's a good point. Because I don't think. I mean, we don't, sea creatures don't need hair, really. I mean, some of them have. It doesn't matter. I mean, you got like penguins and shit, and uh, you know, and uh, walruses and seals. Seals do have some a little bit of furs on them. Otters. Um, so I don't know, maybe it does need a little bit of hairs on it, but, um, yeah, it probably is some type of, uh, mammal, which we know we have mammals in the ocean, so that's not far-fetched. And that's another thing. This is the ocean. We're not talking about a lake monster. Right. You know, we're talking about something that's living out in the ocean where fucking literally anything could be and we would have no idea. Um, so, you know, that's about as much as we know. I definitely want to deep dive more into, um, the Inuit history um just to see i've been really into that lately verifying those claims against what we know versus you know what we don't or whatever um you know I, I, and uh man i'd like to go there i'd like to see it but there, like i said there's even a pattern people think that it's most um it, it's most active during like the winter months from like october to, to march which huh. is interesting yeah well is it warmer along the shoreline then so that would make sense that it would follow the food and come in come into the shore it could i don't know much about that area i'm i'm in the midwest so yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> just if i'm honest i don't um you know but that that does seem to be the pattern of it so i mean if you're gonna catch it um you know leave leave your home in the midwest uh during the winter months and go out, you know go out west i don't know um but yeah i mean the fact that it's been spotted all along the coast it's not just specific to british columbia it's been spotted everywhere. People of California, people in Washington, people in Oregon, they've all seen it. Um, and then all the way upwards to Alaska, um, which, you know, of course, I'm going to do this to you again. Speaking of Alaska, we did a whole episode on Alaska over on the Weird World <laughs> on the Patreon. Um, so you should go over there and subscribe and listen to us. We didn't talk about this guy, but uh, we did talk about some really interesting things. So. No, and after California slides into the ocean and Arizona becomes beach front, beachfront property, I'm sure they're right. washing ashore there. That's true. Just used to bring it full circle. That's true. Just waiting for that meteor to hit right off the coast there. Right. Um, and <laughs> break everything off. But anyway, that's Caddy. There's really not much else. I mean, there is. Sure, I could go over all the accounts of all these people that have seen it. Because we're not, again, when we talk about sightings, I'm not just talking about, you know, your, your grandpa's best friend's brother from way back when saw it. I'm talking... These are people of power. These are lawyers. These are doctors. These are people that are credible or seem to be credible, um, you know, that are seeing this thing. It's entire families with children, you know. Well, they took um, pictures or they brought corpses ashore and took pictures of corpses or whatever. Yeah. Right. I mean, these are good. These are good sightings. Um, you know, if you want to read more, again, um, there are two books about it by these two guys that I sh probably shouldn't know the names of the books and 
better know the names of the two guys, but whatever. Just look up uh, Kaborosaurus. You could spell it. I'm going to spell it out in the title, and, and that's probably the only fucking thing that'll pop up on it because, <laughs> again, just it's been overlooked. Um, us, uh, us finding these creatures and classifying them as, as legitimate um, is something that's very interesting. I, I kind of – I really want to do a show about, like, what it would look like to discover a cryptid um, because I think that people should know kind of what that process might be. This is an argument that doesn't only happen within cryptozoology. It's not specific. To, it, it's specific to biology in, in general. Um, you know, what do we classify as life? What do we classify as legitimate? At what point do we stop theorizing these things and we recognize them? Um, you know, that line has to be drawn somewhere in all of science, right? And so um, this was really the first big attempt. Nobody had really tried to publish a paper like this before. Um, this was the first big attempt to do that. And, you know, they thought that we, sh you know, the argument is that we shouldn't have to have physical specimens in order to recognize these creatures. They exist. Um, you know, and there's plenty of evidence to prove that they do. Um, and that argument still exists today. Like I said, it exists, again, in, in biology and in zoology um, because of endangered species and stuff like that. If a species is critically endangered, we don't want really to go fucking kill one to prove that it's still around. Um, you know, so how can we prove that it exists still without you know, doing, going that far, um, you know, and sometimes we don't, sometimes we'll just classify shit as extinct because we just assume, um, you know, and, and that's not really fair either because then we're not protecting them anymore. So anyway, I guess that's an episode for another day. I won't, I won't drone on anymore. Um, Pato, you got any closing remarks? No, I'm just trying to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. Pato's trying to stay alive right now. So, um, no, to hear it, to hear a completely different side of Pato, listen to this this month's <laughs> Patreon episode. Weird World of Arizona. Five days before I fell ill, when I'm full of piss and vinegar and 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 pluck and determination. Oh, um, everybody, give Pato a big round of applause at home. <laughs> I want you on the fucking bus right now. Listen to this podcast, just fucking clapping away. This motherfucker uh, showed up and threw his dick on the table. Because because Pato is is here and yeah and he showed up, <laughs> um and and he deserves all the praise and uh, oh, I'm, I'm just a man, Asher. I'm just a man. You're a man with a podcast. <sighs> yeah, ask you me should, about it sometime. Right, you should get a shirt that's <laughs> 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 so people know to ask you about it. <laughs> um, all right. Well, with that being said, this fun episode. Um, I like these. It's shorter, but oh well. I'll stop making it long. All right, guys. We'll see you back here next Wednesday. <laughs>